Hey guys, and welcome to this video on graphene and full earrings. First of all, if you haven't seen my video on giant covalent structures, then do go and look at that now because you really need to understand that and the structure of graphite before you can really have a look at this topic. Anyway, so in this video, you need to be able to understand the structure of both graphite, oh sorry, graphene, graphite obviously as well, and full e-reens, right? We're also going to have a look at some of the uses of these substances. And finally, we're going to also examine how the structure of these substances relates to their functions and uses. Okay, so let's dive straight into that right now. All right, so first of all, we're going to have a look at graphene. Okay, now graphene is basically a single layer of graphite, right? You should know already the structure of graphite, and that is that you have hexagonal layers of carbon atoms. So carbon atoms bound in hexagonal rings, right? And, and they form layers. You also have delocalized electrons, which are able to flow uh, anywhere that they like, in the overall giant structure, right? Now, graphene is a special type of graphite. Basically, it's a single layer of graphite, which makes it crazily thin and really lightweight. However, it maintains uh, the same kind of, or sorry, it maintains the same ability to conduct electricity because it still has those delocalized electrons. However, being really, really thin like that, but still uh, um, having the giant kind of covalent structure makes it really strong, right? It's a very strong substance which allows it to be used in a certain number of ways, right? So graphene is, is a relatively new substance and it's being used in things like sports equipments, right? Things being coated in graphene. I, for example, have a pair of skis which is coated in graphene, right? It basically increases the strength of them, stops them from rattling around so much, so it's very cool in that sense. Also, graphene is being used in electronics, right? Having a single layer, um, which doesn't add barely anything to the weight of something, but can conduct electricity, allows obviously new uses to be applied to certain materials. And so it's also being used in electronics for that reason. Okay, and here is an obvious diagram of graphene. It looks exactly like really your diagrams of graphite are going to look, except there's only one layer. There aren't multiple layers. All right, so moving on to fullerenes. Here we go. Now, there's two real fullerenes that you that you want to know about. But in general, a fullerene is a molecule of carbon atoms uh, with a hollow center, right? You generally form a cage-like structure with a hollow center, and that is a fullerene. Okay, I've got two diagrams here because there's two separate uh, actual examples. There are actually way more, but we're just going to focus on two. This first one is Buckminster Fullerene, right? It's a bit of a mouthful to say, um, but this is pretty much the first, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is, the first Fullerene that was discovered or produced, right? It's a 60 carbon molecule. Um, it basically looks like a football, yeah? It looks like a football. You've got these hexagonal layers, and, and I wonder if you can see it. I'm going to draw it in blue so you can see it. You've got these hexagonal layers here, right? This is a hexagon, and you've got a load of other hexagons, and they're joined together by these pentagons, right? It's actually how the old-style footballs used to be constructed, so quite interesting in that sense. Now, these molecules are, are really, really small. Obviously, they're only 60 carbons, right, in comparison to something like graphite or graphene. Really, really small, but th and they have a hollow center. You can basically put things into that hollow center, right? For example, drugs. And the, the, the carbon uh, molecule, so the Buckminster Fullerene molecule, acts like a cage. And it actually allows um, that cage to pass through certain things, including cell membranes, right? Which is really interesting. And so you can actually target drug delivery. So you can put drugs inside these things and cells will take them up because they're in that package, right? Which is really useful. And that is how it's being used. They're also used as things like lubricants because basically um, they're non-polar. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, but it means that things which um, pass over each other, um, if you if you put a load of a load of a fullerene in between them, it basically stops them from touching each other, and so it can be used as a lubricant in that sense. Okay, so moving on, we have carbon nanotubes, and this here is 
a diagram of a carbon nanotube. You may have heard of these, you may not, it doesn't really matter. They're basically giant fullerenes, okay? They're really, really big and they're long kind of, um, long kind of tubes as the name suggests which which are crazy small right around these you can you can kind of see these hexagons right i'm drawing them in here well, i'm kind of drawing them in circles but you can kind of see that these are hexagons it, but they basically form a hollow tube now importantly just like things like diamond and like and like graphite if you've got a load of carbon in a giant molecular structure or, or a giant sorry covalent structure that it has an extremely high tensile strength Right? These are tiny, but they have a very, very high strength and a very light weight in comparison to their strength. And so they can be used for various different things. Right, They're used in specialized substances, including electronics, because just like the, uh, the rest, this, is, this conducts electricity. And they're also very, very strong. And so they're used in things like lightweight fibers and in building materials in order to uh, fortify building materials, if you like, and strengthen them. And that's basically as far as I'm going to go. And so you need to understand the structures of graphene and fullerene. You should know that now. Some of the uses of both of them and how their structures actually help uh, them to be suitable for that function. Cool. So I hope that made sense. And I'm going to stop there. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, I hope that really made sense to you. If it didn't, feel free to pop me a question over and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, but thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe as usual. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.